Good day. This is the third part of Home Office and Branch Accounting General Procedures. And we are going to tackle or discuss adjustments to the reciprocal accounts. Now, allow me to show to you the same source. So this is Advanced Financial Accounting and Reporting Procedures and Applications. Why do we have to reconcile reciprocal accounts? Now, as said in the introduction, when there are intra-company or intercompany accounts, the two accounts in their respective books, namely investment and branch or branch current in the home office books and the home office or home office current in the branch books will have to be used or utilized. However, it is possible that there would be instances that one would be able to record ahead of the other. It's also possible that there could be some errors encountered in the recording aside from the delays or the time lags. In that case or in those situations or cases, the very reason that the two accounts would not be equal, hence the point of reconciling the reciprocal accounts. So these are the main reciprocal accounts, namely again the investment in branch or branch current and the home office or home office current. It is because the other two reciprocal accounts, namely the shipments to branch, that is a deduction for the purpose of computing cost of goods sold of the home office, and shipments from home office, which is an addition to get the cost of goods available for sale and cost of goods sold for the branch, actually would have impact on the previously mentioned major reciprocal accounts or intra-company accounts. So when we, for example, credit shipments to branch, that will have a corresponding debit to investment in branch. So basically, those latter two will have impact on the previous two. All right. So this could be the classifications of the data to be reconciled. So again, it's possible that one company or one books of account has been updated ahead of the other. So for example, debit in the investment in branch without corresponding credits to home office. Remember, they are reciprocal in the sense that the debit on this side will have a corresponding credit on the other account. So credit on this account will have debit on the other. So that's number two. Number three is the opposite now. So debits in the home office account will have credit in the investment in branch. And then opposite also of number two for number four or the bookkeeping or mechanical errors on either set of books. So these are the five commonly classifications of reconciliation or adjustments. Now for the purposes of adjustments, we have to take note again that we should think of the opposites and that will be easier for us because if we think that, for example, the debit for investment in branch is correct, which is also assumed, by the way, in reconciliation. So whenever that is stated in the problem or is shown, we assume that is correct. So it should have been containing a corresponding same amount, but on the opposite side, credit of the home office account, just to get the reciprocal point of view or the parallel point of view. And that's the point of that. Then also with the other three subsequent items. So we just have to take note of that. Also, another tip is that whoever is the doer of the action, we assume that that person or that entity is the correct one. Example, who makes the shipment to the branch? It is the home office. So whenever there is a discrepancy between the records, of the home office and the branch, we assume that the home office made the correct entry because it is the home office that is the doer of the action, which is quite a possibility in real life since whoever makes the transaction knows more or much better than the other, unless it is otherwise stated in the problem that even if the home office made the shipment, but it made the error, which is quite ironic, I would say that, all right. So let's go to examples. Here are the two accounts of investment and branch home office books and the home office in the branch books. So it is very important that before we reconcile, we have to take note that 
the beginning balances of the two accounts must be equal with each other. Otherwise, we cannot proceed to equality of the two at the end of the accounting period. So example, this is 50,000, November 30 balance as well as here. If these two are not equal, say this is 40,000, for sure, no matter what we do, we cannot reconcile because the two beginning balances are not equal. And it is also very important to take note that we should not proceed to reconciliation for the next accounting period unless we have reconciled the previous accounting period or periods. Otherwise, the errors and the concerns will be carried forward or over the different accounting periods. So that's a tip in real life. Again, many things can happen, but if we can do that, we reconcile first before reconciling another or the next or subsequent periods, then that's going to be okay. So let us now do the reconciliation. To reconcile, we just have to have one quick straightforward analysis. So normally, if you're going to ask me, my setup is that I normally begin on one side and compare that to the other side. So example, I begin with investment in branch and home office books. I begin with the debit side. And I compare that to the credit side in the branch books for the home office. Of course, do not include the beginning balance. Simply look that they are equal. Normally, they would be equal though in problems. So let's begin. December 1, there is 1,450. And here, this is 1,540. So this is a transposition error. So this is an error normally committed during the posting or copying of the values or amounts. You know this from trial balance from basic accounting. So what do we do? Expenses paid, chargeable to branch. And then expenses, we have here 1,540. So Question would be, who should be making the adjustment then? So we have to ask ourselves. Anyway, the adjustments are being discussed here, but this would be the form or format though. So who made the error? It would be the branch. You can notice that here. We can make this worksheet, by the way, in reconciliation. This is a good way. And then others will not like put some particulars here, but because we want our presentation to be presentable, of course, we have to put some particulars in this particular part here. Anyway, going back, so who will make the adjustment? So it would be the branch because the payment was made by the home office. It pays for them. So for sure, it has seen the values in the invoices. Otherwise, the payee would be complaining. Again, that could be an assumption, safe assumption. So that's why we are going to deduct 90 to the home office. So if you can notice that from here, this is anyway placed as the last from here, but for me, it might be my first if you are going to ask me. So that's minus 90. So the entry, journal entry or adjusting entry is debit home office, a minus to that and credit expenses so that the proper amount of the expenses will be reflected as 1450 All right, next, we're done with the two. 20,000 shipment to branch, and then here it's not present. So there was a shipment coming from the home office not reflected by the branch. Therefore, we have to make an adjusting entry here. When this was made, the entry was debit investment in branch, credit shipments to branch. So the entry, adjusting entry here would be debit shipments from home office, in transit, it's possible or it's okay not to put in transit and credit home office at 20,000. So that's how simple it is. We're done with this one, check. Next, I go to the credit side, investment in branch. So for you to be easily guided, you can put a check mark for done transactions work mark or anything so you can just do that so here cash received from branch that's 30,000 here then cash sent home office okay check so they are both present collection of branch receivable or accounts receivable 5,000 but not here 
So the entry here was that this is collection of the branch AR. This would have been debit cash credit investment in branch credit. So here, the opposite debit home office credit accounts receivable. So that would be an adjusting entry on the part of the home office though. But then on the part of the home office, we are not going to put that yet here. So we are very concerned yet with the part of the investment in branch. So, so far, if you can recall here for the debit side, remember we are okay for these two. So no adjustments here yet. And then here, no adjustments here yet, right? Okay, so we are done with this one. So a while ago, this adjustment for here or from here would be for the home office account in the branch books. So as what I've said, my normal flow is that I begin from debit side of investment in branch, I compare, and then if I don't see yet for the investment in branch, I just skip. So here, no. Then here, no. All right, next, home office credit. So this one, a while ago I mentioned about the negative 90, correct? So the fifth here, here, fifth. It's possible that the adjustments though would be in any order because of your way of adjustments, but I would suggest you do your flow or analysis one flow or one time. So compare here and here, so no adjustment here yet, then here and here, no adjustment on this part here yet. Here, so that's our first adjusting entry. That is to debit home office credit expenses. Then collection of home office account receivable, this one 6,000. Here, it's not here. So this is okay. The entry here was, of course, collection debit cash credit home office. So the entry here is debit the investment in branch and credit account receivable. So let's check that. Where's that one? Okay, here, the fourth entry. So that would be the first entry in terms of the investment in branch. And I will place that here somewhere at the bottom. Okay, this one, so debit and addition. Next is, this is okay. After that, this one, 30,000, 30,000, okay. 8,000 purchased office equipment. Probably this is for the branch because why is it shown here, right? If this is like an independent transaction, this wouldn't have shown under the home office. So debit the office equipment and then credit the home office. And then let's just say if the payment is done here, but let's check though the interpretation, proper interpretation of this particular one so it appears though if you are going to read further it appears that this one is the purchase of office equipment of the branch for the equipment to be used by the home office so the entry here was debit home office credit cash so the entry here would be debit office equipment and credit so that would be a credit to investment in branch anyway if you have some doubts a while ago i said like this is debit to office equipment credit home office well there would be some doubts because remember this is debit right so debit to home office credit something some account title so you would say mm, what could be the proper entry it should have been cash right or cash and then here is the debit of the office equipment credit investment and branch. So that's a minus. And you can see that here. Okay, minus 8,000. Then another one, we keep on going back and forth. Hopefully you are guided. Then, okay, that's done there. Then I think I've also highlighted this one, 5,000, not yet reflected here. So there was an adjusting entry that should have been recorded at this part here. And that is to debit the 
home office and then we are going to credit accounts receivable and that is for the branch so home office and then accounts receivable here so it seems that in terms of the pattern though if you are going to ask me it would be like i compare this one and this one then i would say oh there is an error so this would be my first entry because this has impact here right first adjustment then i compare this one here and this one so it's not present here so there would be an adjustment here so that's first and second 20,000 next this part here i've noticed the 5,000 which is not here so this would be my third adjusting entry then i'm done with investment in branch home office books proceed now to home office account in branch books i start with credit or i would suggest start with the normal balance so just like here debit for investment in branch and credit for home office so 1540 was done 6000 here it's present it's not here so this is the fourth one then debit for home office 30,000 both are present here, 30,000 also for the home office books credit. The 8,000 here is available, but it's not here. So this is the fifth adjusting entry. So as what I've said, the format or flow could be different, but for sure, the final values here would be okay. Some would be like mixing all. So it doesn't matter like if the first is just the addition or the first items would be additions and the next would be deductions. so some would be mixing even me i would just be mixing all of them all the particulars here and that's okay for as long as the adjusted balances are going to be the same right so that's the point of the reconciliation we must make sure that at the end of the accounting period for the purpose of the heading anyway heading should have been in the middle but that's okay then adjusting balances or adjusted balances should be equal with each other all right so hopefully you actually got the points from this particular discussions final thoughts just follow the format and you can mix the particulars then be guided by the flow so you start with the normal balances and compare with the opposite and if you see any missing figures that would be the adjustments all right so i'll see you next time for another learning point for home office and branch accounting because we are not yet through and thank you very much for listening and god bless us all